prioritizing, like um, don't let urgency overrule priority. And sometimes we find, um, but this is the moving in God's priority is this, is that sometimes there's an urgency that we sh think we should keep something or hold on to something. And God says, no, that's, that's an urgency feeling. What, what is my priority for the season for you guys? Um, what, what, what focus on the priority that I have. The pro priority I have for daily life church is to touch people's hearts, to bring freedom to people, to bring healing to people. Whatever it takes to get there, get there. And that's a priority. We, are, we have a vision that's been there for all this time. We, we started the ministry as Let Go That God ministry. And we started with inner healing deliverance ministry. And we still do that. Not the same way, but we still do that. And we did that f uh, for many, many years. And, and so we started off with just having a heart for people to see people free and to fill with purpose and destiny to move forward in a new way. Amen? And so that's why we're, that's, and we want to bring that DNA in full, full force this season. Uh, it might look differently. It might not mean uh, me being praying for everybody or uh, doing one-on-one, -on -one, but it's going to bring into this place we're going to see the representation of God's healing, his freedom, and his deliverance and everything he's called us. And teaching too, of course, everything involved. It's going to be a balanced church setting, I believe, because of what we're doing. I'm not saying it wasn't. It's just this is the season. This is the season. Now, come on. Last year, we all came here Sunday, and we all received well. Like, God moved. That's why we're here, right? And so it's not that God didn't move. God just says it's time to transition. That's all. It's not that Sunday was a bad thing. and not, It isn't. It was just a matter of saying God just showing us this is the move that we want you to have. This is what we want you to walk into. Amen? So we're not denying the fact that Sundays were great here. We're not denying the fact that the presence of God was great here because it was. But we're going to a whole new level, a whole new direction. Not into a whole new direction, but we're going into a transition where we feel God will, that we feel that we can be more relaxed in doing what God has called us to do. Amen? And there's so much more that we could talk about with that, but that's fine. We won't go there right now. And so let's look at this, moving in God's priority. I, I think that we can relate this message not just to what we're doing, because it really doesn't, the scriptures I'm laying forward has nothing to do with transition from Saturday to Sunday. But it has to do with our transition. What are we, what are we prioritizing? Um, are we anxious and are we, are we reacting on anxiousness? And so when transition happens, there's anxiousness in our hearts. There is. When transition happens, then um, when when urgencies, it feels urgent. We feel this um, compelling anxiousness that comes on us, and um, we find out we're trying to justify what it is. But the fact is, every time we move, we get anxious. We get every time we go forward. Every time you buy a house, you get anxious. Every time you buy a new car, you get anxious. Life transitions bring anxiousness, and we have to not relay that to the enemy. We got to relay that to God sometimes. And if it's the enemy, then let's deal with it. But we got to relay that and saying that that sometimes anxiety comes because of the moves we make, and anxiety is going to be only for a moment because I lost sleep last night, which is not a bad thing. It just happened. It's because there is anxiousness in this transition for me, and it's not a bad thing because I know God's call. But there's anxiousness. There's there's this, oh, you know, I know I can't say no to this, but at the same time, the human nature says, oh, we've got to have a good, good old day, Sunday morning services, uh, get people out of their beds and get them here half asleep, try to wake them up. And <laughs> Not every church is that way, but we are in a culture where everybody comes from a distance, uh, and, and people come from all over the place, and right from the niche. <laughs> niche. And right from the States, we have people coming, and, um, and, 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 and it just is that way. See, one thing good about Saturday, this is just a joke, by the way, but one thing good about Saturday is you can argue in the morning and make it up in the afternoon and come totally healthy in the evening. So you have all day to work yourself out to come to the service. <laughs> but anyway, um, but that's what it is. It's, it's just that culture is that we want to bring people that energy and bring that expectation alive to people so they can come wide awake and ready. I'm not saying they're always sleepy, but just it's that atmosphere of saying that we're, we're getting ready for the day. We've been working towards this, this day, and now it's time to see God move. And I, I believe that's what he's doing here, and that's what's going to happen here, and it's going to be good. So we have to prioritize. I could have gone and said the urgency of my heart and say, you know what, we'll just work on it till it comes. We could. But you know what, I'm a person that always 
kills things if they don't work, you know. Like, not kills things, that's a better word, but it's a, you know what, I can't live in something that is working, but I want to see better. And God has said this is going to be better, and that's why we're doing it. But anyway, so I couldn't go according to the urgency of the heart or the urgency of people's opinion. You have to go according to the priority of God. And God has prioritized that to, for us to do this. And he, he, he allowed us to w um, weigh it out and make our own decision, of course. And so this is what it is. And so let's look at this scripture. And I'm going to talk about the scripture of, of where Lazarus got sick. And Jesus was patient, too patient in most people's opinion. And he, 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 didn't, he didn't overrule. If Jesus can wait till somebody dies and raise him from the dead because he's not ruled over urgencies, <laughs> but over priority, then there's a, there's a cool thing in that. But anyway, we look at this verse, first part of the, uh, John 11. We're going to go from, we're going to just stay in John 11 today completely. There's no moving around besides scripture moving around, but we're going to stay in John 11 today. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with an ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. Those brother of Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sister sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. I think that's how we often justify ur urgency. We justify urgency saying, well, it's your family. It's the one you love, Pastor George. It's, it's your favorite. We get justified by urgency because Sunday is the favorite of the churches. But we get justified by that. We get justified by the, the, the language that we represent. <laughs> And Jesus says, this is the one you love. This, this is the word love here is this. It says, this is the one you approve. <laughs> this is the one you sanction. This is the one you treat with affection and kindly. This is, this is that kind of love she's talking about. Uh, this is the one you welcome and you befriend. It. This is that person. Like, this is how we approach our urgencies. Come on. It's my, you got to make time. It's my brother. You got to make time. It's my sister. It's my family. Come on. You, gotta, you love these people. Come on. But Jesus had this place of not dealing with urgency because there was an urgency. There was a real urgency there because he died. There, uh, like, this is an urgency. He was that sick that if Jesus wouldn't do something about it, like, first of all, let's go to a whole new level compared to last night's healing. Sometimes we, we, we feel like if, if people can have that kind, of, uh, that kind of faith with Jesus, saying, if I just run to Jesus and call upon him, my brother will be healed. They have that kind of faith to find Jesus because he was not in Judea, because he couldn't be in Judea. He was, he was, there was a mark on him. And so he was in this place. They went out of the way to find healing for Lazarus. They went out, but first of all, do we have that kind of passion that we will fight for someone like that? But then when we fight for someone like that, are you willing to put God's priority in the process? Amen? And so we have to put God's priority in the process. That's what Jesus did here. And he goes, my brother Lazarus is sick. The one you love. This is the place of urgency that if you're close to somebody, you have urgency for them. And so they, if you're close to your wife or your family member or whatever, you have an urgency. And sometimes that urgency is overruling the priority because you're doing something that's actually hindering you. And sometimes God just says, back off and wait, and I will take care of it. And so this is what it is. And this, is, of course, is nothing to do with my, <laughs> my, my transition, but this is a message for today. Amen? So then we go in verse 4, and verse 4 to 6, it says, Then Jesus heard that he said, This sickness is not to death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. This has to be a resemblance, and I believe that Jesus had this idea that this, this uh, Lazarus had to be risen on the third day. He had to show a resemblance of something. And there is a place of this. First of all, he would be more accepted when he walks into a place with a greater purpose, meaning that he would be more accepted in Judea if he's going to raise somebody. He, there would, he would have more chance of people forgiving him for whatever they thought he did wrong because there was this moment of this important man rising up. Sometimes we, we want this little thing to fix, but if we wait to fix a bigger thing, it's a bigger response. There's a bigger thing happening than you think there is. Stop fighting for those little things and be patient enough to get the big healing. 
Amen? So be patient enough on the process that Jesus wants to take you. Every process that he's taking us through is to glorify himself. Every process is so that people will say, yes, Jesus, here I am. Because Jesus came down to be your Savior, and he wants you to be there with him. So whatever it takes to bring the wow moment to the people that don't believe, that's what God's about. Amen? And so you have to be patient in your process. Maybe you've been waiting for your healing today, or maybe you've been waiting for something in your life, and maybe you just need to be around the right people for it to happen because God wants to show off his presence. Maybe you have to dare to be around Judea, where people don't like you. Maybe you have to dare to receive the very raising of your death in the front of the people that were willing to stone you. Maybe so that they can see Jesus is alive, even those people that were against Jesus. See, the, this, this part is this, is that his priority brought him to glory. If, you're, if we bring the priority into what we're doing here, it's going to bring you to God's glory. We don't, we're not here to, to feel, and, and, and everybody has their opinion, but there is, God has created a vision, a clear vision is that we're going to move forward. And if we just walk in priority, his glory is going to shine up. Amen? That's, we're going to see more healings. We're going to see more deliverance because we're going to choose to walk in his priority. We're not going to fight for urgencies. But we're going to look at the urgencies and, and deal with them. Just like Jesus dealt with his urgency, but he dealt it with priority. He waited upon it. Amen? And so when we look at that, that's how we got to walk towards our life. And this is a healing weekend, I believe. Because we're, we, are, we are moving forth in this presence like never before. So that, it says, Jesus said that sickness is not to death, but for the, for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified. Your sickness, your weakness, your infirmity, your feebleness, everything that's within sickness is not to death. See, the thing is, sometimes sickness is not even what we're fighting for, like physically. We're dealing with our minds. We're dealing with, with this strength that we're lacking. We're dealing with tiredness. We're dealing with whatever. And God says, that is not at the end. There, there is a power of my glory that's going to shine up if you just walk in my priority and allow me to, to, to take you through the process. You might feel by the third day that you're dead, but you're going to rise up brand new. You might feel like you lost everything, but when Jesus shows up, everything rises up in you. If you might feel that I lost everything, and because you know why you lost everything, God wanted you to lose everything so that you could rise up in him in a brand new way so he could be glorified so that he could see new things happening. Amen? That's where God wants us. This sickness will bring you glory to, of God in the body of Christ, meaning that his sickness brought the glory of God into everybody that was tolerating and heard these noises. You just think about all the noise that would have happened during this time when Jesus was about to be, to be crucified. You just think about all the noise that the Jews heard, all the, all the followers of Jesus heard. Just think about all the noise that happened. Tremendous amount of noise. There's tremendous amount of noise happening, even this, even with this, and maybe not by, by, by fault, but by default, is that people say, well, you quit in church? Like, all kinds of noise happens right away, right? And you've got to fix that noise. And so when people, just to think that, I think this was an opportunity for Jesus Christ to become alive in the hate country of what he, where he was wanted. It became a place where people that knew him finally just got it again. And they got the revelation of it. Amen? And I think sometimes we need that. Sometimes we need to, we need to walk into the place of our hate area where, where we, are, we are a mark. But you, Jesus was careful. He would not go in there unless if he had a purpose to, to be glorified. See, we walk into the places that we have marked and we think we can make changes, but there's no opportunity for God to be glorified. So we got to walk in priority. we got to take away our urgency. And we got to say, I'm not going to run because I'm anxious. I'm not going to run because I'm in this place right now. I'm going to run in the voice of God. I want to hear your voice, God. And then when you walk into those places, you're going to see change in those places. Because he can be glorified. Amen? This wouldn't bring death to the body of Christ. Like if you think about it, it's like, just think about Mary and Martha for a moment. <laughs> They're saying, we, he was sick. We told you, Jesus. We told you this person was sick. Now it's too late. 
Just think about how they would have thought. Sometimes we think it's too late, and Jesus says, I'm just on time. I'm just on time. How many times in your life, people watching and sitting here, how many times in your life have you been at the very fringe of giving up because you don't feel like you're getting it? Come on. I bet you Mary and Martha were willing to give up on Jesus and say, Jesus, this was the one you loved. And you're not even taking care of the ones you love? So when you walk in that place of this, you have to understand what God is doing. He is creating a pattern of being glorified. Verse 5 says this. Am I still? Yeah, verse 5 says this. And Jesus loved Martha, her sister, and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he stayed two days still in the same place where he was. I've been working on this area, saying, Sometimes people call me, they call me, they try, like, whatever. And so I, I sometimes just have to say no because it's, it's not time. And this is what Jesus was doing. He said, just imagine, Jesus loved these people. Jesus hang out with these people. This was his team possibly, right? Now, if I, as a pastor, didn't take care of my team, you guys would hate me. Even if I waited two days when you're in... No, just, just think about it. Just think about the urgency that would feel saying, Pastor, we really need something now. Or I'm not Jesus. I'm just comparing a team member. Pastor, we, but I say, it's just not time yet. But I need it now because I, if I don't get it now, I might lose everything. And I probably, my, my, my heart probably would say, okay, let's do something, right? But Jesus had the patience to sit for two more days, even when somebody was on his deathbed. And so Jesus waited for two more days, then he went on the third day, but he went two more days, and, and the, it was too late. They thought it was too late. He sat there for the same place. It's verse 7, it says this, Then after that, says his disciples, Let us go into Gal uh, Judea sorry, again. His disciples said to him, Master, the Jews... Of the late sought to stone you, and you go hither again. These disciples saying, You can't go there. These guys are against you. The very purpose of whatever we go through is to have priority to make change in the chaos. Jesus waited till he was ready to deal with chaos. He waited till chaos could be his glory could be revealed in chaos. So we walk in this place. We walk in the presence like this, and, and we often say, don't go there again. But Jesus was ready to do something there. Sometimes your loved ones are in the chaos. Your loved ones are in your chaos. The, your family is caught around the people that are, have a mark on you. And so you have to think about this for a moment, where Jesus came and he got himself ready. The power of God was not accepted there to begin with, first of all. So Jesus had to, had to walk in priority and wait till one of his own people were in need so his power could show up. Jesus had to wait for the phenomenal, for the wow moment, if you want to call it that so that everybody else would see because nobody else would have received it. Nobody else in that place would receive it because there's a mark on his head by them. Just think about it. Have you tried praying for somebody that don't like you? It doesn't work that well. Have you tried doing a miracle when somebody just is ready with a stone in his hand? They don't do that well, does it? So Jesus had to wait for one of his own loved ones to need him. Isn't that, isn't that kind of in interesting and cool? But, I mean, we wouldn't consider it cool. We would say, we would be full of urgency and prior. We would say, this is priority, and Jesus saw it differently. That is why they went and they did what they expected. They expected Jesus to move. <laughs> the disciples said, Master, you can't go there again. This is not for you. This is, this is not a place for it.
<laughs> I just saw your post, sorry. <laughs> it confused me. It's all good. God is good, amen? And when we can walk in this place of understanding, I was just conf interrupted a little bit with my phone. That's what happens with phones, doesn't it? You get interrupted. Except people like that guy there, he doesn't use his phone for those kind of things. <laughs> It's all good. Anyway, here it goes. Numbers verse uh, 9 says this, and Jesus answers, Are, you, are there no, not 12 hours in a day? If any man walks in the day, he stumbles not, because he sees the light of this world. But if a man walks in night, he stumbles because he has no light in him. So they were trying to, I believe they were saying, let's go now. And Jesus said, let's wait, let's wait. Sometimes we are so eager that we wait, don't wait for the visual. Sometimes we're so ego that we don't wait for the ego. Like, I believe this move of God that we're doing here and, and the change, it, for me, was so visual. There was so much light in it. There was so much understanding in it. There was just such a, like, a, a no-brainer almost in it, like, for me. That, that's how much light was in it. But if we would have just kind of panically just tried to change things to make things work here, we would have made a chaos here. We would have stumbled in the dark. So Jesus waited till the light. Jesus waited till he could see where he walked so he wouldn't stumble and get hurt or he'd get robbed. At nighttime, you get robbed. You get robbed in your darkness. You get robbed in, if you're not in the presence of God. You get robbed. You get robbed from those things. The very thing you think you can work through yourself, you can't because you're getting robbed in your darkness. And God says it's time to get into the light. And so he waited for the light. And he was talking about the light of the earth, but we can translate it to we need to walk in the light of God. We need to walk in that place. And he says, I want to walk where I can get there to do my purpose so people can be glorify the God that we serve. Amen? Are you with me, church? Good. And he says, I understand, but a man walks in the night and stumbles. I just said that. <laughs> But walks is this, it's a journey. We, we journey in the light, not in the darkness. If you are in the darkness, sit down, relax, and wait for the light. Sometimes we're too busy running around in the dark, not knowing where we're going, and we are, because darkness represents urgency, light represents priority. And so when you walk in the darkness, you are in urgency, because if you can't wait for the light to shine for your purpose and for your healing, there is a problem in you that is called urgency. You're sitting there, and you can't see nothing, but you're running for something because you are in urgency, and you're trying to find the help, but you can't see where to get it. And so we got to walk in the light to see the presence. The process happens in priority of the light, not in the urgency of the darkness. Because where does urgencies come from? It comes from the attacks of the enemy. It comes from your troubles. It comes from your circumstances. That's where urgencies come from. Wouldn't you not agree? So when we walk in the priority, it comes in the light. When I walk in priority, all these urgencies will be dealt with when the light shines. And I will walk and see where I'm going. And I will go to the place where God will be glorified. Amen? So we walk in that place. That's where we're going. We're going on a journey. It's, it, the, the walk means to, to, to live for, to regulate your life, to have good conduct in your life. You, you have better conduct in your life in the light. You, you have better, better outcome in the light. And, and Jesus had the understanding here, but some people would not wait. They would rather walk in the dark to get there because of the urgency of they feel. And that's how we are sometimes. We are in the dark, and, and I have many times helped people. They're so in urgency that they, they're stumbling over everything while they're trying to get to the healing. And in the meantime, they're getting hurt. They need healing for more stuff. In the meantime, more can worms are open. In the meantime, more garbage is coming out. In the meantime, while they're trying to get to this point, to that point in the dark, it's not working. There's too many chairs in the way. There's too many something in the way. There's too many enemies in the way. We need to open up like Jesus did and walk in priority. And that's what I believe we're doing this season. We're walking in priority. Our priority is to bring light to the world. Our priority is not to, to feed religion. Our priority is to bring Jesus alive. Our priority is to bring freedom to people. Our, pro our priority is to bring purpose alive into people, to bring destiny to people, to, to reveal destiny. I can't bring him to people, but we can reveal it to people. Our God, our, we are called to do something greater than just a religious service. That's where we're walking towards. And that's why if, if what, what, what is religion? Religion is something when, when we try to remake something happen that is not working no more. You replay 
the revival that is not happening no more. You replay the move that's not happening. That become, it becomes very religious. It becomes a duty coming to church. But if we keep it alive and we keep it in the light, we always are keeping active in the presence of God. That's where we are at today. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means it's time to change. It wasn't wrong, and it's just time to change. And where it's going to go next, I don't know. God's just given me this step so far, and it's a good step so far. Let's work with this step. Let's get excited about this step, and let's see change happening in this step. Amen? Yes. Verse 11 says, And these things said he. And after that he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him out of the sleep. So there's two different things you, want, you need to see here. The people saw him as dead, and Jesus saw him as sleeping. Where you think your gift, your purpose is dead, God says it just needs to be waked up. Where you feel you have no purpose, no life in your, no more, God says, no, you do. I just have to wake it up. Where we feel it's the end of something, he thinks it's the beginning of something. Where, he, where we feel that, that that train has passed, he says that train is just about to begin. You know, it's literally, literally, that's how we are as people. When we look at it, we think that is over. People might have thought, what if, if, if we were not listening to God? What if we would continue on Sunday mornings and if that didn't work? What, what would happen? We would die. What if? I'm not saying that it would die, but what if we're not being obedient in the priority that God has called us to be? What if? It doesn't have to die if you listen to God. You move forward. You move forward into new directions, new transitions, and you allow God to move in it. Amen? So this is what he said. It says, I'm going there where we thought, where even some people think, maybe that thing, it's not going to last. It is going to last because he's waking it up. We are rising up in this new season. We are in a new transition. Whatever. He's saying, come forth, Lazarus, to daily life. He's saying, come forth. Every grave clothes coming down and off. Everything that was holding us back because we're saying yes to Jesus. And we were, we were willing to wait for him. We were willing to wait, even though we thought there was an urgency that he should have showed up last year already. We were willing to wait, and he did show up last year, but this is a brand new wave of his glory. Amen? A lot of scripture today. <laughs> Verse 12 says this, and then his disciples, Lord, if, if he sleeps, he shall do well. However, Jesus spoke of his death. So he understood he was dead, but in the spirit tree he understood that he was just sleeping because there was an everlasting life involved. But they thought that he had spoken of him taking rest in the sleep. <laughs> Sometimes God says something to remove the very thing that's actual in this world. He, he speaks what is in his dimension, not in our dimension. In our dimension, he was dead. In his dimension, he was sleeping. And just because you think your purpose or your health is gone, in his dimension, it's not. Even though the doctors might say that is just no hope, in his dimension, there's still hope. Amen? He sees things differently than we do, but he had to bring, come back to earth and say, yeah, I understand he's dead. <laughs> he's not resting. He's going to rise up. Amen? Just to think that the best things grow out of dead seeds. The best things that grow is out of dead seeds. When, hallelujah. Where was I? Verse 12. I'm ahead of myself here. So he's taking not a rest, but anyway, here we go. Verse 14 says, Then Jesus said to them plainly. Everybody say plainly. Sometimes you need to be spoken plainly to, but that hurts. I've been working on that a little bit. I think when I say things plainly, I think I hurt people sometimes. And I do. I, I really do. Um, I'm working on that. I mean, up here I do well, but in, when it comes to one-on-one, -on -one, I sometimes hurt people. And this plainly means that I speak in boldness or confidence and openly. Some people can handle that for me, but some can't. So i got to learn to calm myself down on the ones that can't. <laughs> but I'm, I'm a bold speaker. When it comes to 
when I get it, I just, and I have to come back to him and say, okay, I calmed down today. <laughs> Let's go over that again with the calmness a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But Jesus had to say to them plainly, boldly, with confidence, Lazarus is dead in your eyes. <laughs> He's dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. Ho, oh, wouldn't I be spoken against if I would say that? I'd say you, people going to a deathbed, for instance. I've been there going to a deathbed. I'm glad I wasn't here when he was, she was alive. Like, just, I'm glad for your sakes I wasn't there. And Jesus had his place. Uh, and, and if we would just get that radical when God speaks to us. I'm not saying don't be foolish and say that when God's not speaking to you. And maybe you never need to say it. But be that radical saying that, thank God that he's dead so that he can rise, so he can show you who he is. You guys all need to be woken up today again. You've been kind of sloughing off in my presence, and I need to wake you up, and I'm glad this happened. Because Jesus knew his power. Jesus knew the God, he's, that God he is. Amen? So when you look at this, he says, I'm glad for your sakes that it was not there, to in, the intent that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. I, I, I'm so thankful that this happened so you can believe. A lot of times I talk to people, about, well, that's good that you're suffering. Okay, now it's time to believe. Now it's time to go into the new level, amen? <laughs> yeah. For your sakes, I'm glad that you're kind of mad that we're not doing Sundays. I'm kind of okay with that because watch God show up. Because we're go taking his priority, not a man priority. Just, just for your sakes, <laughs> that's what, how bold he was, for your sakes, for all those that didn't want to come back because we're not doing Sunday, for your sakes, I wish you'd just come on a Saturday and just find out what God is doing. Because that's what it's about. What is God doing? He's going to wake us up on Saturdays. He's going to rise us up as a church on Saturdays. He's going to grow us individually. It doesn't even have to be a big church. It just has to be people willing to grow. Gee, our church has grown as individuals. Like when I look at that, I'm way more excited about the growth of individuals than the numbers of the seats. I'm really more excited about that. But if one individual grows, the next one will grow, and the next one, it will just, it will take off from there, amen? But if we can get excited for ourselves of what God is doing in this family, we're going to be going all the way. Paul traveled all over the place, and he didn't have a big church. But he helped many other individuals grow so that their churches could grow. So when you think that this is small, it's bigger than you think it is. It's so much bigger than you think it is because of what we're called to be and what our DNA of a church is. That's why it's bigger. We're not, church, we're not called to be a local church alone. We're called to have a local church that reaches out. We're called to walk out of these doors and make a difference out there. That's where our influence is going to be if you choose to let it be. We're called to come here Saturdays and get alive on Sundays. We're called here to make a difference. Amen? So it's not about the number of people coming here. It's about the number of people that you will reach for the kingdom of God. Amen? And we're less. Here we go. <laughs> where was I? Hallelujah. But he wants us to believe. That's why he said it was, he was glad for it. And we're 16. Is that still up there? Verse 16? Yep. Verse 16 says this. Just so you know, he's saying this plainly. Lazarus did die so that Jesus could be come back to Judea because that was his doorway to Judea again. It was, your health is your doorway to your religious family. Your rising up is your doorway to the things that were not open before. Jesus, this is going to Judea, this uh, give him the opportunity of an invitation to represent himself. So he walked there probably pretty sneaky, and he wanted to walk by light so that they couldn't see him, they, that they couldn't sneak up on him. So that one thing is this, is that when you walk with the light, people don't attack. When you shine with Jesus and you surround yourself with the body of Christ, you have less chance of attack. If you walk in the dark, or dark by yourself trying to stumble, you're going to get attacked. So Jesus knew that if he would, because they were against him, they were, had a mark and said, but they would never attack him with people around him. They would never do that. 
So he made his way because of the process, because he had priority. He, he didn't run because of urgencies, but he, he planned it out so that it could be glorified. Amen? So if you want to not be attacked, surround yourself by light. Who's the light? Jesus is the light, but he also called us to be the light. We are called to be the light of the world, amen? And if we are the light of the world, that means if you're around me and I'm around you, we'll shine together. That means the darkness is not there. That means we will walk freely together compared to in the darkness. Amen? So he went to the power to believe again. That's what he wanted for them. Then verse 16 says, Then said Thomas, we can just come up here, Colleen, that'd be great. Then he said to, oh, yes. Hey, um, some, uh, somebody back there can tell Mary to bring the kids up and order pizza. That'd be great if you could. And so, once said Thomas, which is called Dynamis, something like that, to his fellow disciples, let us go that we may die with him. They knew how dangerous it was. But when we're in priority, we are willing to die for him. We're willing to walk with him. We are willing to take the risk of his presence. We are walking into this world today. And we could, in some areas of the country, they're being stoned. In some area countries, they're being martyrs, whatever you want to call them. Are you willing to walk with Jesus in spite of the condition? As long as the priority is there, as long as the call is there, as long as you're going with the voice of God, are you ready to walk, amen? Are you willing to walk in the transitions that God has called us to do? And are you willing to go for the call of God in spite of the conditions? Because the conditions are not always great in it. But when we walk in the priority of it, God's condition is in it. And he's going to move in it. People get fearful. They think something's going to miss out. Something's going to pass away. The fear of moving ahead to go and, win, and to fight. We are scared to be defeated. We need to walk. Just like Thomas said to them, this is priority in spite of the conditions. I'm going in no matter what it takes. I'm going for the walk of Jesus. I'm going for this walk going into the presence of God like never before and I'm choosing and this is the question that I think we need to ask ourselves today this is the question we need to ask ourselves today is your urgency overruling your priority we need to ask ourselves is that are we in this season are we running with urgencies are we anxious because of urgencies or of change are we are we anxious because we don't see? Are we anxious because we don't understand the priority of God today? What are we anxious about in your personal life, in your whatever you're going through? You have to ask yourself, am I walking in urgency or am I walking in priority? What am I doing right now? Am I, am I listening to God before I act or if I'm just acting on urgencies? Am I just reacting? I have friends around me and sometimes you react according to urgencies. And then we talk it out, and then after a while, we find out if it's meant to be or not meant to be. But that's what priority is, figuring it out before you do something that you're going to be sorry for. Sometimes it looks like this is the thing to do. I need to do this. I should do this. There should be no reason why I shouldn't do this. But then you sit back like Jesus did for two days, and you wait for his priority. And you find your direction before you act upon your urgency. We waited six weeks for this. When God told me to start Saturday nights, and I'm saying God told me because I really believe it that strongly. So I'm not trying to be religious. I'm just really believe it that strongly. And I said, okay, God. And in my heart, I knew that Sundays would shut down, but I wouldn't admit it at that time. So it was okay. If you want to do Saturday Sundays, go for it, but you're going to change. And in my mind, it says, I think it's just me talking. Because I just don't want, I don't, me talking, I don't think I want to do two services, you know, forever. I think it's just me talking. Then when I walked into it, it was very relevant 
and very visual of what God wanted to do. Because we just sat back and waited upon the Lord and allowed the transition to happen. Instead of switching a switch where we could have blown all the pipes, we trickled it. We released it. We brought it into the place. Amen? That's where we are today. So let's get time to give again. You got an opportunity to give again. If you're online, you can give online. You can give with our debit card. We have a square back there. It's unlimited. I think it's unlimited debit now. I've never tried big amounts, so I don't know. I mean, I know it takes more than 500, but I could take more. If you want to try 2,000 today, you can. But, um, but anyway, you can give online. Giving that dlchurch.ca if you want e transfer. If you're watching Facebook, just press the learn more button or go into our, uh, our webpage, dailylightchurch.ca. There's places to give through PayPal. So let's go with that. Let's go and pick up the offering. If there... I know a lot, some of you were here yesterday, and that's fine. We just want to make sure the opportunity is there for everybody to, to give. Because I think it's just a good thing to do. Amen? To get connected. Let's just pray for the offering here before we go offline. Thank you for joining us. That's awesome. Let's just pray together. And whoever's watching, let's believe together that God can move in this season like never before. Amen. Lord, I just pray a blessing over the offering. Lord, even the online giving, the partnerships that come in, the e-transfers that come in. Lord, we just pray a blessing on everyone that's going to give today and that's going to give this week in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.